Hi, my name is Dan, and uh, this video is one in a long series of videos that I'm uh, doing which chart the progress of uh, creating a simulated 4-bit uh, CPU uh, with lots of explanation and going from the basic logic gates all the way through to a working programmable CPU. Um, so there's a roadmap of where we're going down in the description below, um, as is also a link to this free software that I'm using, which is called Digital Works, which is a, um, a simulation software for digital electronics, uh, and it's quite good. Um, and um, in the larger scheme of things, uh, or within that, we're now in a, a shorter playlist of uh, videos which are about creating the control unit um, and we're going to create today a sub uh, section of the control unit we're going to create what I call the op decoder um, and what this does is it takes in uh, it takes in our op code and it decides which kind of operation this is and we've got four kinds of operation uh, which are halt um, ALU commands, uh, register transfer commands, and jump commands. Um, so at this stage, all we're doing is we're, we're deciding which one of those four types our uh, operation is. Um, and I should say at this point that... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, no, I don't need to say that at this point. No, I should say at this point that uh, um, a lot of the previous videos were quite generic in terms of... Uh, the simulation, to making registers, memory banks, uh, decoders, uh, etc. But we're now into the uh, the end game of this, which is all quite specific. Um, I do hope you're playing along with me and uh, creating this for yourself because it's quite a satisfying thing to do. Um, uh, so uh, let's crack on. <coughs> um. <coughs> <coughs> Please excuse my cough. Uh, so uh, we're going to want to uh, bring in uh, the opcode. So we need some tags for that. Uh, one, two, three, four. And I'm just going to label that. Uh, let's change my color back to black. And that is called op. Code three to zero. Okay, that actually we're going to move that across a bit. Um, and uh, one thing that I've done uh, that I haven't kind of charted uh, me doing is that I have actually created a little macro called opcodes. Uh, this has no functionality in it. Uh, all it is is a bunch of text annotations. If I drag this in, it just gives me a reminder of the uh, the opcodes that we created. So this is our, our opcode set. Um, and we're going to need this in uh, various places. And I thought rather than keeping flicking backwards and forwards with the screen whilst I'm recording a video, I don't like flicking through different things if I can help it, that I would create a little reminder that I can stick on actually in digital works. Uh, there's no need for you to do this if you don't want to, but of course you can do. Uh, if you think it'll help you. Um, it just takes a few minutes, uh, and that's drawn from the uh, from the earlier video where we uh, decided on what the opcodes are. Um, so there there would be all sorts of ways of doing this, uh, working out, we could work out a, a Boolean uh, statement for each one of these, the, the four different categories, uh, use whatever reduction we've got and get a minimal solution. We have uh, a more ham-fisted solution, uh, which is that we're just going to use um, a decoder. Uh, so um, uh, I've got a four bit with enable here. So let's uh, uh, use that. And uh, wire up our opcode to this. So what this is going to do is it's going to give us um, uh, 16 outputs, one for each potential opcode. And then what we want to do is we want to then have four outputs, which are 
for the different groups Halt, ALU, Jump and Reg. Uh, so I'm going to put those lower down with a bit of space uh, to put some uh, uh, gates in. One. I'll separate them quite a bit more. I'm trying to see if my spacing's right. I'm a little bit too obsessive at times. Uh, so we're going to call that one halt. And does it matter which order we do this in? Um, ALU. Reg. And what's it going to be jump? Okay. And the reason why I've used the enable version is that actually what we're going to want to do is uh, wire this up to the op register and then um, when we get the execute signals, we've got X1 and X2. Uh, to send them through uh, one of these opticoders um, so that that then gets out as a pulse through, coming in in the enable and it comes out in the correct um, into the correct group. Uh, so um, let's stick in uh, whilst we're whilst we're there. We'll put the tag for the uh, for the enable and label it. Right, so all that remains is to wire up this stuff, and however many we've got, we need to all them together. So if we, we've got six ALU uh, commands, which are uh, one, which is that one, and two, which is that one. Uh, in fact, one of the things that can, uh, uh, because we've got the order here, actually we can just use that and go through each one in order, um, which is fine. Uh, we've got two. Because we've got six, we can't make a six input uh, OR gate, so we will use two three input OR gates and uh, feed the results into a two input OR gate uh, to get our ALU. Um, but HALT, we can wire up directly. Uh, there we go. Um, so let's let's do a quick count for each of the each of these types. I said we've got six ALU ones, so that needs to be two, uh, two three input ORs uh, into a two input OR. And basically, I'm going to set up the OR gates first, and then I'm going to go through this list in order because it's probably the easiest way to pick out which ones. Uh, which ones are which? Uh, and I'll get there. So I'm crowding this a bit. Let's move it up. Um, and let's wire these up while we're there. Okay. Uh, how many reg have we got? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is so much the same. Uh, so I'm just going to cut and paste that set to there. Nice. And then we've got three jumps, so we just need one of those three input uh, or gets for that. I'm going to put that at the same level as the others, just in terms of connecting up the wires it's gonna be a little bit better right what i'm not going to do is spend ages turning all these into into corners and uh, making all those wires what i'm going to do is just kind of directly drag down so it's going to look a little bit like spaghetti um once i've done it i think i might need to do a double check look through and then we will be able to test this component uh so um, so we'll see if there's any problems then. So HALT was the first one. The next two are both ALU uh, commands. So we'll plug them down to the ALU. Uh, the next one's a jump command. And do you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of rearrangement. 
um, because our jump commands are all near the left hand end and our reg commands are all near the right hand end. So I'm going to swap these two sets of things over just to make life a little bit easier. go right what did we say uh the next one's a jump make sure we're going into the one of the jumps and then the next one's an alu and the next two are jumps um and then we have another alu command right Next one is a register. Then we have two uh, ALU commands in a row. And we have then the rest one, two, three, four, five oh, reg commands. One, two, three. Five. Okay, that should be it. So uh, we're going to go into the template now. This has still got the text in from when I just created the um, this opcodes thing. So um, <clears throat> it is a feature of digital works that when you create a new circuit, it keeps the uh, template from the last one. Um, and this is useful when you're making similar templates. Um, so a similar macro as well after another. Uh, but in our case, it's less useful. And I'm just wondering how big we're going to want to make this. It doesn't need to be huge. We've only got four outputs and five inputs. Um, and we will do it so that uh, inputs are at the... Oh, actually, say inputs at the top, I'll put enable in one of the sides. Um, <coughs> So, uh, four inputs, four outputs. They can be spaced differently because the four inputs are a binary number and the four outputs are not. They're discrete. And because we've got a bit of space, I'm just going to spread them a little bit more just to kind of give the subtle implication that that is not a binary number. Um, Uh, let's level that, so that's up 3 to 0. And we might be able to do a um, all in one here, so halt ALU. Uh, we'll do it in the same order that we've got them down below. No reason why not. There is no logical order for these. Go and we'll stick uh, an enable in there. Does it matter which side it is? I do not know. Um, fine, we can go there. And then we want a, a larger annotation to say what it is. Um, so it is, we're calling it an op decoder. <clears throat> right, we've got to go through the process of um, connecting these up. There aren't that many of them. Um, so I will do it in real time. Uh, op code three, and I'll talk through it. Well, there's nothing much to talk through as we can. I will waffle generally as I put uh, these together. Um, and so I'm testing my ability for my brain and my hand to do one thing and for my, uh, uh, for my mouth to do another thing. Uh, because I'm a lecturer, I have this uncanny ability to separate my mouth from the rest of my brain um, and for it to carry on talking whilst my brain's doing something else. 
Uh, have you ever suspect, suspected that of lecturers, that uh, sometimes their mouth's working and their brain's not actually engaged with what they're saying? Um, and if if you have, then the reason is because that actually happens. Um, and I have kind of feel like I've separated my mind into two parts at this point. One of them is doing this wiring up, and the other one is kind of vaguely rambling. Um, and I find that this sometimes happens in lectures. Uh, but that managed to keep me talking whilst we did all that wiring up. Okay, so we're going to save this. Uh, so save us. What do we call it? Opticoder. Decoder. And then we're going to we are going to do a test. Uh, so uh, a new circuit. Uh, we want the opticoder in, obviously. Uh, we also want our opcodes in so that we can compare with them. Um, I've got a feeling that having written those opcodes is going to be incredibly useful for me over the next few videos. Uh, once again, I'm doing this thing where my mouth is doing something and my mind is doing something else. Uh, we need the enable. There we go. Right, so wiring up. Enable op. So we're going to go through each um, each one in turn. For what, what we're actually going to first check is that the enable just switches on or off. So we've got zero coming in, so this should be the halt. What's happening? We're not simulating. It would help. Okay. On, off, like anything, right? So, 0001 is an ALU. That's good. 0010 is the next one, is an ALU. 0011 is a jump. 0100 is an ALU. 0101 is a jump. 0110 is a jump. And 0111 is ALU. And then the other half, 1000 is a wrench, 1001 is an ALU, 1010 is ALU, 1011 is a wrench, and the rest are all wrenches, so 1100 is a wrench, 1101 is a wrench, 1110 is a wrench, and 1111 is a wrench. And if we disable the enable, it turns them all off. <clears throat> I haven't checked the enable for all of them, but there's no reason why it shouldn't work because it's part of the uh, binary decoder that's inside that. So that was actually fairly straightforward. Uh, uh, so in the next video, we're going to do uh, the next bit. Off the top of my head, I can't remember which one it is, but that's it from me for now.